This video will be demonstrating a simple approach to the orthopedic hand examination. To begin, we will give a brief overview of the hand anatomy. The main nerves supplying the hand are the median, ulnar, and radial nerves. The anterior compartment of the forearm contains the hand and wrist flexors. These are all supplied by the median nerve, except for flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial two muscles of the flexor digitorum profundus and the medial two lumbricals, which are supplied by the ulnar nerve. The posterior compartment of the forearm contains the hand and wrist extensors. These are easy. They are supplied by the radial nerve, also known as the reaching nerve. The median nerve has two branches. The palmar cutaneous branch supplies the skin over the thinner eminence and thumb, and these are spared in carpal tunnel syndrome. The digital cutaneous branch supplies sensation to digits 1, 2, 3, and the radial half of 4 on the palmar aspect of the hand. On the dorsal aspect, the tips of digits 1, 2, 3, and the radial half of 4 are also supplied by the median nerve. The radial nerve in the hand supplies digits 1, 2, 3, and the radial half of 4 on the dorsal aspect. And the radial side of the thumb. The ulnar nerve supplies digits 5 and the ulnar half of 4 on both the palmar and dorsal aspect of the hand. As with all physical examinations, begin with a general inspection of the patient as well as a regional examination of the upper limb, looking especially at the nearby elbow joint. Moving on to the hand itself, we will look, feel, and move it. Perform each of these steps in a systematic manner, starting proximally at the wrist and moving down towards the distal phalanges. Inspect the hands for scars or lacerations, erythema, joint swellings which may be hard or soft, and nail changes. Muscle wasting may be evident on the dorsum of the hand. The most striking observation may be the posture of the hand, either at rest or upon movement. On the palmar aspect, note any wasting of the thena and hypothena eminences. Remember to pay attention to any muscle wasting of the forearm. Generally, we are feeling for swelling, temperature, and tenderness. Palpate the joints from the wrist down, including the snuff box. Tenderness in the snuff box may be indicative of a scaphoid fracture. Capillary refill time is best measured on the nail bed and should be less than 2 seconds. On the palmar surface, palpate the flexor tendons for swellings, dupuytren's contractures and a trigger finger. Feel for the radial and ulnar pulses.
Perform a quick screen by asking the patient to make a fist and extend, abduct and adduct the fingers. Note any limitation in movement. If limitation is found, assess further by passive movement. Ask the patient to flex and extend the wrist and ulna and radially deviate it. Ask the patient to perform the normal movements of the thumb. Flexion. Flexion. Extension. Extension. Abduction. 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 And opposition. Here are the same thumb movements from a different angle. Flexion. Extension. Abduction. Adduction. And opposition. Move each finger one at a time, isolating individual joints as you go. Start at the metacarpophalangeal joints. Assessment of the proximal interphalangeal joints is assisted by anchoring the adjacent fingers. Flexion at these joints involves the flexor digitorum superficialis. The distal interphalangeal joints are assessed by anchoring the proximal and middle phalanges of the finger of interest. Flexion here is a result of the action of the flexor digitorum profundus only. Anchor the base of the thumb to assess flexion of the interphalangeal joint, the action of flexor pollicis longus. Screen for sensation of the median nerve at the tip of the thumb, the radial nerve at the first dorsal web space, and the ulnar nerve at the tip of the little finger. If a radiculopathy is suspected, a quick screen of the dermatomes can be assessed as follows, C6, C7, and C8. The tunnel test involves tapping the flexor retiniculum below which lies the median nerve within the carpal tunnel. The Fallon test involves flexion of the wrist for 30 to 60 seconds. These test for carpal tunnel syndrome and are positive when the patient's symptoms are reproduced. Finkelstein's test involves ulnar deviation of a clenched fist. This tests for decrovane synovitis of the extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis long. Allen's test is performed by asking the patient to hold their hand in a fist while occluding both the radial and ulnar artery. Ask the patient to relax the hand and check that the fingers have blanched. Release the radial artery. Flushing of the fingers within 5 to 15 seconds proves patency of the artery. Repeat for the ulnar artery. Fromant sign is performed by asking the patient to grasp a piece of paper between the index finger and thumb and to resist your pulling away. The thumb is in adduction. Failure of this movement results in compensatory flexion at the thumb interphalangeal joint.